Hello there, my name is Belinda Tynan and I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor of Learning and Teaching at the Open University. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time out to talk with us a little bit about the leadership challenges for today's emerging online leader. So I'm wondering if you can define what you see as a challenge for new individuals coming into this field. And I understand you have gone through recent transformation in your own job responsibilities. And maybe you could share with us a little bit about what that was like. Mm. Well, and you have a neat strategy I know you're going to show us here. <laughs> well, I did sort of try to collect my thoughts, so I'll probably refer to my little mind map okay, here I'm as I do that. Get up and um, just share with our group. So I sort of thought that I'd talk to you about you know, starting a new job and what happened to me and then what I did and the kind of leadership actions I think that I pulled from that that made it, you that know, what it was. Wonderful. wonderful, thank so you. So maybe I'll start with that. Okay. Because I want, and I probably won't refer to the job that I'm currently doing, but actually talk about another job. Okay. Because when I thought about, you know, what was a big challenge, um, there are lots of challenges I've had along the way, but one that's very recent and fresh in my mind might be interesting. Sure. So I've just picked one. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about when I, I went into one job and it was a new job that I was starting. So I arrived at this organisation and a change process had already started. So there'd been a big restructure um, and I was employed. And when I arrived, it was kind of, that was my job then to take the change process through. So number one, I wasn't involved in the mm. review or the revitalisation or... Or even defining. Well, exactly. Yeah. You know, and so the whole kind of um, investigation and reconnaissance that had occurred around what was going to happen in that area had happened prior, prior to my even getting there. So the table was already set, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So interesting challenge walking in and, mm. and not really, you know, when you go through that process, being interviewed for a job and going somewhere, you don't get the ins and outs of it properly. So it's only really when you hit the ground that you understand exactly what you've inherited. And so you could imagine what I walked into. Mm. So, you know, I've listed some of the stuff here. There were really grumpy staff. Mm. Um, there was no resource to actually mm. do the change that was then going to be required. A restructure had occurred. Mm. And so there were already redundancies. Um, there were people that, you know, I met who were saying, oh, well, I won't be here very long because I'll be gone next week. And that was quite challenging to face those people who were being made redundant. It was very unclear amongst mm. that group of staff that were left, just exactly what was the strategy going to be going forward. It was even unclear what was going to be achieved by the restructure, and there were key positions where people had accepted redundancies that were now going to be vacant, and the staff sitting around them were really, really worried about, well, who was going to do that job? How was that job going to be covered? Because there were less of them you know, for the right, same amount right. of work that was there. So had those decisions already been made or yeah. was that, that wasn't up to you to decide? No, okay. No, that, that, would, that was already the scenario that okay. I was inheriting. There was a perception that there was no real leadership in what was going on. Um, there had not been somebody in the post that I took on for two years. It was only an acting person and I think there'd been two acting people in that time. Okay. And so... It felt a bit anchorless, mm -hmm. you know, when I sort of mm -hmm. arrived there. And they were really looking for who was coming in, me, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, about what I was going to do and how I was going to lead them, in a okay. sense. And so you can imagine that here's all these people who are quite grumpy. Some of them have been restructured. They were exhibiting all those behaviours of, you know, they were fearful about what was going on. Very defensive. Very defensive. Sure. You know, not sure who was going to do what. It was business as usual, plus we were going to do a change mm -hmm. over the top of it and no resource to help support mm. that. Did you have any experience <laughs> in this kind of a, as you oh. stepped into this, anything to draw on? Well, not, not as dramatic mm. as that. You know, I'd been in other sort of organizations where it had to be part of a change process, but potentially from the beginning of that, not sort of right. landing in the middle of it. Right, right, right. And so I wasn't sure whether I should just like run for the hills and I thought, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, what am I doing here? Sure. I should have asked more questions. Mm. Why didn't I know that when I arrived that that mm. was going to happen? And you had to more or less accept how the table had been set. I mean, you weren't in a position to say, oh, no, we're not going down that path. We're going to change it another way. You really had to work the plan. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But, but yes and no, in a sense. Mm. Like, um, I guess in terms of my own personal leadership um, philosophy or pressage, whatever you want to call it, over time I've been probably potentially working towards what I would call a more liberated style of, of okay. working as a leader. And so if this group were thinking that they were going to get this sort of Napoleonic out the front okay. on the horse leading, that was going to be a very difficult challenge for yeah, me yeah, to yeah. be able to be that kind sure. of leader. 
And so I mm. always had that sense that even though the table had been laid for me, if I was going to get this group of people to trust and have confidence in me, then I needed to take them on a journey where they in themselves <coughs> felt that they could be leaders as well. Mm. And that they weren't going to get from me someone who was going to tell them how to do it. Mm. But in fact, we as a group were going to figure out how it would happen. Mm. And of course, there would be winners and losers in that. So I would imagine, though, your, your, your approach um, would be somewhat comforting to folks to say you were, because my sense is you were trying to engage them in the process rather than sort of a top-down, this is how yeah. things are going to be done. Yeah, and I think they were expecting that I would come in and that somehow I knew what the plan was. But in fact, there wasn't a plan. Mm. And that was the freedom for me, really, to create the plan. And so I had some choices then to make about, well, what kind of leadership was required in this space at this given time, okay. and how would I do that? Okay. You know, so, you know, the first thing I said about doing is that I needed to build some trust and confidence that mm. these people could trust me sure. to let them get to know me in a sense. Sure. And so I did things like um, I walked the corridors. I would just turn up in places. Mm. And I remember one person saying to me that they had never, ever had a senior executive in their office and how refreshing it was. Oh. So, you know, that, that sort of behaviour from me in terms of just wandering, sure. just talking, not offering any opinion, mm -hmm. not making any judgments, but just trying to understand what people had been going through mm. and how they perceived the issues or the problems. You were humanising the process. Trying to. Yeah. Trying to yeah. open a door that, look, it's not just about me telling, but actually I'd really like you to help sure. me do this, wow. in a sense. What trying was the response? That. Initially, it was like, well, doesn't she know what she's doing? You're here to tell uh, us what we're doing and we're expecting. Uh, you know, there was a lot of that, we want you to leave. Sure. We've needed a leader. Sure. I don't know how many times I heard, oh, thank goodness you're here. We'll get some leadership. Hmm. Which I thought, interesting sort of proposition from them that they sure. felt that somebody was going to come in and solve the problem for Right. Them. Right. Whereas I was not prepared to do that. Right. And my instant response was, hey, I'm no Napoleon. Yeah, this right, is not right, going to right, happen right, like right. that. I would imagine you'd also have trust issues there. Oh, they're, they're, suspect, issues. they're suspicious of why you're wandering the halls and wanting to talk to them, and yeah. you had to get over that as well. Well, one of the things I did initially, and I've just sort of written my note here about this, is that there was a, a small senior team that was mm. um, around me as well, and I did an awful lot of work with that smaller leadership mm, okay. team, senior team, to create them, um, to, to develop trust in them and confidence in them that allowed me to access the rest of the staff. Oh, okay. So about between sort of 60 to 90 people depending mm -hmm. on who was on contract or not on contract okay. in the total group. So not unmanageable in a sense to right. take that time. Sure. And I thought that, that that first sort of month it was worth the investment. Mm -hmm. If they were to trust me then I needed to know deeply mm -hmm. what was going on and what the issues sure. were. And so with the help of that management team in a sense, they, they gave me that trust, mm -hmm. which then helped me go out and work um, with the rest of the people too. And so, you know, we sort of embarked on a process, um, as you would expect, mm -hmm. about, well, what would be our new vision going forward? Mm -hmm. What would be the values that we as a group would like to have? And so I had a facilitator help do that, mm -hmm. so I, I got someone to help me. And with my senior team, we worked the whole group. And mm -hmm. so we went layer wow. by layer, group by group, we um, looked at the university strategic um, vision statement and said, well, what would our mission be? And what would our vision be alongside that? And we developed that over a period of six to eight weeks. So there was an opportunity to engage them in defining their future. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that was quite difficult for some people. Mm. You know, some people were quite used to what they had been doing. Sure. And so they were still trying to define their future by what had been passed sure. and what they felt had worked well. Right. And so there was a lot of challenge that had to happen mm. um, in that space. And, right. and some people responded well. But there was the odd person. I, I have you know, a nice story about two people in particular. One, one person got out of up in the room one day and just walked off and kind of didn't return for a week. Um, and another wow. person just sort of sat there, you know, with, um, with the sort of the arms crossed, right. not engaging, right. frowning the whole time. Right. That person ended up becoming, I became quite close to that person. I'll be darned. Yeah, they, they really changed mm. as they began to think things through and they could see a future for themselves right, right, than what right. we were suggesting. But um, working through that trust process was critical. I, I think in this situation that if I hadn't have taken the time 
potentially we would not have had the outcome we had. Sure. Which I think was a really strong outcome, mm. you know, in a sense. Um, and when I left that organisation, the and I'm still in touch with a lot of those mm -hmm. people, um, there, there's a strong sense of care. They care about mm. me mm. as well, which was yeah. quite interesting. Sure. You know, as, as I care about them. Right, right, right. Um, and I think that some of the commentary I've had from them, they feel much more enabled. Yeah. They feel quite capable of stating something, asking a question, not being fearful, and being able to exhibit behaviours which we as a group agreed would be acceptable right. in the workplace. You know, it strikes me though, you were working on the culture yep. in, a, in a major way. And a colleague of mine is fond of saying that culture trumps uh, policy, it trumps yep. almost everything. Yeah, and you I really attack that head on. I had to. I think yeah. if I'd gone in with a more sort of um, deductionist or instructionist right. sort of style right. approach, um, it would have been a lot harder. Sure. It would have been harder to, to shift that group. And they had to make a fundamental mm. change, quite a significant change mm. in the way that they actually worked. And they didn't believe they could do it without the resource. Mind mm. you, I have to say, when I first started, I thought, oh, this is crazy. How can you not have a resource to do a change yeah. but do business as usual? Sure. But we did it. Yeah. It went a bit slower than what right. we could have done it, right, right. But, you know, but we actually did we it. got it done. Um, so that sort of modelling of behaviours then through my senior team, and I sort of set up a, a system for coaching and, and got that team really sort of moving quite strongly together and with me, then created the model for what we were expecting, you mm. know, which I think really influenced that culture. Well. Mm. And it meant they had to change a lot of things too, mm. things they hadn't done before. Sure now did with their teams, which really opened up a new layers of respect and valuing of them by their teams as well. Mm. So a big thing was about valuing each other. Right, right. Yeah. Did you find most individuals able to step up to that challenge? Well, yes and no. Some people more than others mm. were prepared okay. to take that leap, okay. and others were um, still very much in that it's all about me. Mm. Where am I in this, right, and where am right, I going? Right, 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 right. And even though you might, we thought that oh, we travelled a fair way with most people. Sure. There was always, there would always be. I think there's going to be a small group in there sure. that is still going to be very much at that level of, well, where am I in this picture? Right, right, And right, quite right, concerned right. about their roles, yeah. whether or not they could develop the capability that was sure. required to move into the future. Sure. Okay. Um, Interesting. But but I think you'd find that in most organisations. Right. Right, Not right, everyone's right. going to, right. to be there. And right. a few people left. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. voluntary. Some mm -hmm. people decided they didn't want to be part of that. Sure. And they left and left yeah. on good terms. Sure. Um, so that was a good thing, too. Yeah. You know, so people were able to make their own choices. It's kind of things. important, I think, in those situations to keep the door open so yeah. that people can do that. And, and I like the idea of on good terms. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. This and supporting people to sure. do that. Sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want them in the room. If they're if they're willing to roll up their sleeves and dig in, if yeah. they're not, yeah, let's find a way to support those people sure. to to do what they think they'd like to do, sure. or otherwise. Yeah. You Good. Know. Okay. Thank you. So, Belinda, you shared the story of of um, helping this group through this transition period, and um, it sounds like ultimately you were mostly successful. I think uh, so. Those people who decided to get on board got on board. And those where maybe it didn't line went someplace else. What's the what's the outcome of that story? Well, um, I tried to sort of grab what I thought were the, the key things, you know, like what the key outcomes were. Um, and I would say that there were changes in people's mental models about how to work in the workplace and how they would negotiate that space better and, in a sense, be leaders within the workplace. Okay. I think we created, um, and it might sound really cliché, but more of a learning community. Mm where people felt comfortable to um, learn from each other and to take from each other and to work hor horizontally across the different departments rather than being pillars. Um, there was, it was less territorial, mm -hmm. so breaking down those barriers that you know there was opportunity for people to work in almost like little mini super teams and bring the expertise together. And there was no more relinquishing of resources to do that kind of thing. Um, which benefited the organisation and the group as a whole, rather than the, 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 pillar the pillars, strands, right. in, in a sense. So it sounds as though you, you um, did a great job of bringing communication up, here we go again, of bringing communication in amongst the group. How did you do with the rest of the university? Well, I think 
if, if there was a part of the story which if I could revisit this and if I could have had a better solution for this, um, this would be the bit of the story. Because while I got lots of trust and openness in that group, and we created our learning community and we were great at calling the behaviours of what we expected because we set up our value system and we had achieved the change that I had inherited and I was asked to do. We were less successful at communicating how we had changed and how that would actually fit with the organisation itself. So we found ourselves in this position where we were ahead of the organisation in terms of the change required. Sure. In fact, it ended up happening much more quickly than we expected. Mm. I think because people were, were just so hungry for it and wanted yeah. it in yeah, the yeah. end. So if I could do it again, some things that I'd need to think more carefully about was, well, what about the organisational culture itself and what he'd had asked us to do? Sure. And I think in reflection, they weren't ready for the change they'd asked us to do. Right, right. And so we went ahead and did the change. Right. But then the organisation wasn't ready for it. And so we'd repositioned, but they hadn't repositioned back to us. And so we hadn't done as good a job as we needed to, mm. I think, in communicating outwards that, well, you asked us to do this change, we've right. now done the change, right. and this is how you now work with us. Right. And so we didn't get that communication effective right. across all areas. In some areas we did. Yeah. Yeah. But we could have been more convincing with how we sort of linked in with the um, deans of the other faculties sure. and, and what their strategies were and how that was going to measure up against ours. Was that, so, did that effect occur because you were so concentrating on this group and trying to get it functional and operational, you sort of, I, I don't want to use the term forgot, but, yeah. but didn't tie it in as closely to the institution as you wish? I think probably we as a group were, were very focused. I think that was one thing. But I think as well that we were kind of left alone to get on with it in mm -hmm. a sense. Mm -hmm. and, and even though whilst I was communicating back into the organisation, potentially we didn't have enough of the champions within our own group that were doing those same communications back out. Mm -hmm. To complicate things, the rest of the organisation was also going through a review and a change oh, process I see. itself. I see. So we sort of got you know, would you call it a crosswind or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. We kind of got caught that we were doing our change and then all of a sudden they're going through change right. and the last thing they want to think about is how we're now going to work with sure, you sure. because they're too busy thinking about how the change was going sure. to affect them. Right. So there's sort of multiple layers of change. Yeah. I don't know how I would handle that differently mm. now except that I probably would have been perhaps more forthright, perhaps mm. more front and centre okay. with the change agents at other university levels to say, look, right. I know you're going through change, right. but we've just gone through it and how sure. can we sort of sure. work better? Um, yeah, I don't know, I think I need to reflect on that yeah. more. Okay. You know, because um, if that happened again, um, I would certainly want to have more impact across the organisation. Sure. Because that ultimately makes the group that I left behind more successful. Sure. So one, one final question maybe for you. What, what piece of advice or word of wisdom could you leave with people stepping into a position? Because the scenario you stepped into is, is one that many people will find themselves as they move around and in particular as they move up yeah. levels, uh, new levels of responsibility. Any, any uh, one insight or? Mm, well, when I think about if I was to sort of define the kind of leadership actions that you might see mm -hmm. amongst that, um, I think for me the big one that I observed quickly was building trust. Mm -hmm. Is they had to know me, and they had to build trust in me, mm -hmm. and they had to build trust in each other, and restore their confidence in what senior management was mm -hmm. sort of asking them to do and to be. And so that walking the corridors, mm -hmm. listening to people, understanding the context deeply and not on a surface level, Sure. Um, I almost treated it like a research project. I collected the narratives. Mm. There were conflicting narratives, so I'd ask everybody, tell me why we did this restructure, you know, and, mm. and how are you feeling about that? I got so many perspectives, wow. and it was such a rich tapestry, sure. you know, across sure. that. It was worth every moment to go wow. collect that. So one piece of advice would be is to don't underestimate the time mm. that you might need to know it deeply. Right. doesn't mean you can take forever. Right, but right. you need to know that deeply and right. you need to be displaying your understanding to others. Right. So I used to do this thing where, can I just test my assumption on you? I've yes. been hearing such and such and so and so and so and so. So what do you think about that? Yes. Am, am I understanding? Have I got the picture sure. here? 
And quite often people go, oh, you've kind of got it, but you haven't got this bit. And so they would help me fill the gap. But that sort of testing of my understanding, I think people liked that. Because then it sort of reassured them that I was thinking about it. You weren't forcing yeah. your per perspective on them. You were asking them to check yeah. your perspective. Yeah, yeah. That's to make brilliant. sure that I had it right. Sure. Um, the other thing I think was really important was that very quickly assessing staff capability and capacity so that I could identify how to value people, sure. that I could identify what the gaps were, because actually I did have a job to do. I had mm. to deal with this change. Sure, sure. You know, we couldn't spend the whole time just kind of having a great love right. in. Right, right, we right. actually had to do the business of the organisation, right. and it was a service area. So I had to assess also very quickly, concurrently, right. just who was there, what sure. they were doing, what capacity we needed, so I could plug those gaps. Yeah. So there was some of that that I did concurrently to kind of, you know, trying to understand. There's a lot going on there. Oh, it's multiple a, levels. It's of, this multiple yeah, levels yeah. of understanding, yeah. you know. And I guess the other thing um, I would say is that that immediate group of people that are around you who are your kind of your immediate sure. peers who you're trusting to help you do, right. you know, the, the reorganization or whatever it is, is ensuring that that they understand what the goals are and where, yeah. you're, going, where you're going. So that they can actually you know, deliver that message as well consistently um, and in a way that others perceive as, as being um, trusting. Yes. Um, yeah, so openness was okay. a big thing. Yeah. I opened it up. Yeah. Every meeting we had was minuted and everyone could read it. Yeah. I started a, you know, a, a wiki site. Sure. Everything went on there. Wow. I instructed my people to take everything back to everyone. Everyone could know everything. Yeah. The yeah. budgets weren't a secret. Yeah. Why are budgets secret? Right. What's secret about that, yeah, particularly? Yeah, right. You know, so right. people got to see things mm -hmm. where they thought things were hiding from them. Sure. And so, you know, that helped develop that sure. confidence and trust right. in things too. Right. So I don't know, there's a lot of messages in there. Yeah. You know. Um, oh, I think it's a fascinating story, and, and I think your approach, I'm going to guess in the end, this was a successful endeavor. It was successful. Yeah. yeah it because worked of, well. Because, you know, what I'm taking away is you put time an investment into the relationships yeah. first. Yeah. I, I love the point you make about gathering the narratives. Yeah. Get the story. Because that that writes people's history yeah. and they want you to have the right history yeah. in order for you to to be yeah. able to act on on the future. Yeah. yeah. Remembering it all. Yeah. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bringing it all together so you do get that cohesive sure. story. Yeah. And trying to sort of rustle out from it um, you know the the gems. There are gems amongst sure. it. And it's the gems that I always like to grab mm -hmm. and, and highlight, you know, and, and bring to the fore, in a yeah. sense. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's, it's that's a wonderful pleasure. story. Yeah, well, I, I can guarantee you we'll use it. Thank you. Good.